Right, it's time for some fun. Every two to three weeks there would be a party or two. Whether that's going out. Concerts or multi-day festivals. Into the outdoors. Entertainment for me was walking on the beach. Or staying in. We do a lot of things at home. Whatever spins your wheels. you still got to have a bit of fun, still have a bit of a life. <laughs> Kia ora, I'm Katie Gossett and welcome to Thrift. Like I say, this episode is all about having a good time. Or, as Shakespeare put it, frame your mind to mirth and merriment, which bars a thousand harms and lengthens life. That sounds pretty promising. I've heard a few people say, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. But clearly Shakespeare reckons we can do both. So we can frame our minds to mirth and merriment. The trouble is, our finances also need to be in the frame. So how can we have fun in a cheap and cheerful way? There's still loads you can do without costing anything. That's Neva, one of my workmates. And this episode's a bit different because I'm not talking to an expert, in inverted commas. When it comes to socialising, we all like different things and everyone has their own take on how to get the best night out. Our conversation begins at a colleague's housewarming party. It's easy to feel like social stuff should be spontaneous, and I'm a serial offender here. I like to do things on the fly. But spontaneity can be expensive when you do and buy everything at the last minute. So tip one is about putting a bit of strategy around our social lives. If we plan things consciously and work in with our friends and pool resources, we can often make our money go quite a bit further. Take Neva, for example. She likes going to gigs, but they can be pricey. A lot of them, especially around like New Year's, were those big ticket items where they were a couple hundred dollars. She budgeted for those tickets and paid them off a few months out, but noticed the cost of living kicking in towards the end of the summer. It was like, oh, actually, I can't just make plans on a Thursday and be like, oh, who wants to go out this weekend? Because you can't afford to go out every weekend. Her strategy now is to actively plan ahead and think about which weekends will be expensive ones and which will be more low-key. You kind of look out over the month, things you might be interested in going to, then maybe playing one or two big weekends. So what does a big weekend look like? For example... I have a 21st with a bunch of family that'll be at someone's house. Which makes things cheaper right away. I'll probably buy one bottle of wine to take with me. But the after party at a ticketed gig in a bar in town will cost a bit more. I then spend money on the ticket and also factor in transport. Say you're on a scooter or you might get an Uber. So mentally she allots another $20 to the transport. And that one night I will be spending upwards of $100, $150 which realistically I can't do that two nights a week. I don't want to get to a point where I'm choosing between groceries or going out. So what about the off weekend, if we can call it that? The low-key version. I would probably still catch up with friends. They would come over. We might have a couple of drinks at home. Or maybe not, if they're watching their budgets. We might have a nice dinner, maybe watch a movie. So that's kind of a monthly strategy. You can still choose to be spontaneous on an evening, but a little bit of planning can help with that too. Definitely my wife and I would have maybe a drink of wine at home. This is another colleague, Alex. Before going out, she cheapens the cost of over-the-counter beers. It's just preloading, basically. So preloading is often a dirty word. It doesn't have a good reputation, particularly when it comes to young people. But used in moderation, it can make a nice night out possible. And it's not just about preloading on alcohol. We would eat a snack first to lessen the cost of what we buy in a restaurant. And then as Neva has mentioned, you have transport and also maybe parking. Alex has a workaround for that. My wife and I actually both bought mopeds. It's very easy to park a moped. So that's a really good cost saving. The other thing is to work in with your friends and pool your resources so everyone can contribute something, whether that's the ride. Maybe you pay a friend to drop you into town. Carpooling is a way to get into town together. Or the venue. Our location is great for hosting. And at house parties, like this one, everyone can chip in and share the food costs. It's a couple of beers and bags of chips, really. It's not a massive financial commitment. That's Adam, another colleague, who says that as costs rise, he's become much more selective about where and when he goes out. Spending big money on drinks and food in town, that notion is waning in terms of its appeal. So if we want to eat out with friends, a lot of us end up at someone's house doing a potluck dinner. We would bring platters, or well, we might get a takeaway, but I guess when you're all chipping in, it's a lot cheaper. Family birthdays and things like that, everyone bring a plate. 
Another colleague, Georgie, has a regular stand and catch up with her neighbours. We do a lot of potlucks with our community, with our village, I guess. In the summertime, it's a barbecue, and in the winter, they do a roast. So that we can spend as much time with the people that we love as possible, but keep the costs down. And they tie that in with cheap entertainment, what Georgie calls homebody stuff. You know, we play Dungeons and Dragons, we'll game, stream movies, we'll have games nights with the neighbours. Other things that can lift the experience are getting people to bring music to play or read a poem, or maybe having a themed night, either with costumes, or special food, maybe a dinner party. We do more of that. Back to Alex. Things that happen at home, dinner parties, I just get everyone to BYO. That's both food and drink, and he has this particular tip. Don't buy cocktails in town, make them at home. They're very easy and they're really fun. You can make some absolute blinding classics, whatever <laughs> floats your fancy. Not literally <laughs> blinding, I no, hope. No, no, no. No, that would be probably some terribly gone wrong homebrew. And speaking of alcohol, one other feature of house parties for Neva and her friends is the safety factor. Because you're not having to worry about, you know, drink spiking, you don't have to worry about strangers or anything like that, and you know that you're in a safe environment. So you can have a lot of fun at home, but sometimes you just feel like a change of scene. You want to go out, out. And that's where tip two comes in, hunting down the deals. We'll look out for a two-for-one pizza deal often. Alex is an old hand at this. Or a two-for-one burger deal can be a factor in choosing a place to go. And finding a bar with an activity is another way to make your money go a wee bit further. We might try and maximise our fun by going where there's a quiz. Or a karaoke bar, or somewhere that has a lot of pool tables. A bowling alley, that's a good option as well. I love doing that kind of thing. If you are socialising around an activity, my wife and I find that it's better bang for buck. And then, maybe more of a daytime thing, but getting outdoors is always a great option and a resource available to everyone, especially here in Ōtōtahi. We get out into the hills around the city a lot. And it's practically free. You just have your petrol cost of getting there. He also bikes around the Port Hills with his friends. If you're biking, it's totally free. (laughs) Because the only thing better than a cheap activity is one that costs nothing at all. No one's going to charge us to walk on the beach. Going to the museum or the art gallery, places that are free. Normally I'll just go window shopping. I would go window shopping because I'm really broke. Neva's also a fan of window shopping at markets and other free events. You don't actually have to buy anything. I think honestly the biggest thing is just that connection, right? You don't have to be spending money to have connection. Work and here's a case in point. Oh, lovely. Well, we'll leave the door open so the office can enjoy uh, your music selection. We're back in the office yeah, and we'll a little RNZ Christchurch tradition, chucking a few albums on the turntable on Friday afternoon. Adam and Alex are uh, usually starters for this. We've got uh, First Baseman Jack's wow. album. Wow. We've got Massive Attack, Mezzanine. Mid-90s classic. classic. Yes. Soundtrack to Shaft. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's start with that, I reckon. Okay. Okay, let's ease into proceedings. <laughs> Oh, the anticipation. There's a really famous hi-hat that should be coming in now, but you're not going to hear it because, yes, as mentioned in a previous episode, we can't play commercial music because then we'd have to pay copyright. And the name of the game and the show is Thrift. Totally shafted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, you are still got a drum. But easing into some cheaper production music now, the reason we're talking about this is that socialising and connection can come in many forms, even if it's just sharing a few tunes with your colleagues on a working day. It's a nice way to glide into the weekend. Quite cathartic. (laughs) We're benefiting here from a lifetime of collection from Adam. And that's the thing. Don't dismiss your hobbies. Adam loves his records, and so tip three, and you get another bonus quote from the bard to thine own self be true. Well, I'm a bit of a homebody. The reality is I like to set my environment up to where I feel comfortable and engaged. That means for Adam, when it comes to having a good time, a night in is sometimes better than a night out. I'm a pretty simple person. I like watching sport and listening to music, and that's kind of like my two main things. And so at home, I can entertain myself as best as possible. Hence being true to yourself. My one piece of advice is think about what's important to you. I suppose be honest with yourself as to what brings you pleasure, what gratifies you, and I suppose make financial decisions around that. Because if you end up going along with some kind of social plan or outing that's not really you, and you're not that into, 
it can be frustrating. That kind of lingering feeling. That was a bit of a waste of time. Why did I do that? I didn't enjoy that at all. And I'm $150 worse off. So it's worth thinking about what you want to do and who you want to be doing it with. If what brings you real joy is going to see a family member, for example, and having a coffee, which is not a big financial commitment, as opposed to having a boozy night out and spending $200 on food and drink with like a semi-distant friend, for example, just think about those things. Once you've got all that straight, the next part of being true to yourself is admitting to others what you're into, or not. People call that loud budgeting, the notion that if you can't afford something, if you're saving for a goal or you have particular priorities, you talk about it, you own it. And while the term might not be well known, a lot of people are already doing it. With Gen Z, it's a lot less taboo talking about money. If someone proposes an idea, people will probably be like, oh no, that's too expensive. Yeah, sometimes it's like, do you want to go out? Nah, I can't afford it, and there's no judgement class on that. Neva and her friends are straight up about it. Yeah, for sure. If someone's saying they can't afford that this week, they can't afford that, and that's okay. And you just go, yeah, that might be me in the next couple of weeks. Alex is on board with it too. That's a wonderful idea. Getting away from that New Zealand shyness about money is really wise. If you can front foot it, especially in a group setting. He's already weaned himself off expensive craft beer. One of your episodes you talked about how you get the second cheapest thing on the menu, but I just go straight for the cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pretentious about that kind of thing at all. And as we've already heard, he's equally comfortable talking about it when hosting at home. Some people, like my wife, tend to have a point of pride, which I respect, in providing all the food. But when I'm organising one, we have an agreement that it'll be BYO. <laughs> She's got to put her pride away. <laughs> so yeah, I'm thrifty to a point of no embarrassment. The good news is that as you plan and stick to your financial goals, it's likely things will get easier. People shouldn't get disheartened by the financial situation changing. It happens to everyone. You're not going to be in the same financial situation your entire life. If you are, I think that's pretty rare. Neva reckons you can still have a lot of fun. You just might have to change a few things here and there, and change isn't necessarily a bad thing. And if the change maybe you might initially view as negative, there'll be some positives in there, and keep looking for those. In the meantime, get organised and plan out some fun times. Work in with your friends so everyone's involved and pool your resources to make everything go a bit further. If you are hitting the town, look for deals, two-for-ones, or find an activity that gives you more bang for your buck. Don't forget there are plenty of fun things that are free. Parks, hills, museums, galleries. And be honest about what you enjoy. Prioritise the stuff that's most important. And on that note, last word to Georgie. Look for the small things. We spend so much time trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to prove to people that we're being successful or that we can afford to do this. But there is so much to be said for taking your family down to the beach for a sunrise or a sunset with a scoop of chips and just spending time together. Next time on Thrift, a return to, quote, the old ways. I'm with the woman people call the preserving queen. She's been showing a whole new generation how to make the most of cheap produce that's available now and pickle and preserve it for later on. To check out that episode and others, make sure you follow and listen to us on your favourite podcast app. Special thanks to my awesome and articulate colleagues, Neva, Adam, Georgie and Alex. This podcast was produced and presented by me, Katie Gossett. It was mixed by Alex Harmer and Tim Watkin is the executive producer of podcasts and series. If you have a tip to share, you can email us at thrift at rnz.co.nz. Thanks for joining us. Kakite. Ka